Pterosaurs are such an incredibly unique lineage of the Great Tree of Life, and during their existence in the Mesozoic, they came in all sorts of shapes and sizes. From the giant Asdarkids to the tiny Anurignathids, pterosaurs managed to fill a wide variety of niches, dominating most of the ancient skies for hundreds of millions of years before succumbing to the devastating mass extinction at the end of the Cretaceous. One of the pterosaurs on the smaller side of the spectrum was a creature called Sordes pylosus. This animal was first uncovered in rocks located in Kazakhstan, dated to about 155 million years ago, during the Kimmeridgian stage of the late Jurassic. The pterosaur had a wingspan of only about 0.6 meters, but possessed a relatively large skull for its body size at 8 centimeters long. When the first fossils of Sordes were originally described in 1971, it was actually a very important discovery. However, the name given to the animal seems a little bit cruel. There were apparently some confusing mistranslations that occurred with the name, since Sordes pylosus was supposed to mean hairy devil. However, it was later pointed out that the name was mistranslated from Latin, with the actual meaning being closer to filthy hair. A pretty unfortunate title really, but it doesn't take away from the significance of this particular pterosaur species. And besides, I think we should just call it Hair Devil. Part of the reason for the attempted name of Hairy Devil is due to the fossils of Sordes being the first direct evidence of hair-like filaments on pterosaurs, structures technically known as pycnofibers. This discovery allowed various implications of pterosaur biology to be clarified, such as demonstrating that the group must have been warm-blooded, since they had an insulating filamentous integument. You may be aware that an interesting development to do with pterosaur pycnofibers was published recently, which we covered in Seven Days of Science. According to this new research, it now seems as though pycnofibers are actually homologous with the feathers of dinosaurs, meaning they are not separately evolved filamentous structures, but instead they share an evolutionary origin. The discovery of the first fossils of Sordes brought more revelations though, as the fossils were so well preserved in the rocks it came from, that not only pycnofibers were still present, but also complete wing membranes, illustrating clearly where these flight surfaces attached on the body of the pterosaur. Some particular features of this wing anatomy to note are the uropatagium, the region of the membrane that runs between the hind limbs, and the brachiopatagia, the primary membranes in the wings of pterosaurs. It's long been a topic of debate amongst paleontologists as to how far different parts of the wing membranes reached in different pterosaur species. But in Sordes, the uropatagium evidently was supported by the fifth toe, and the brachiopatagia extend all the way to the ankles. So, in this pterosaur at least, there is little mystery as to how its flight membranes looked and operated in life. Sordes has been classified as a member of a clade called Rampharynchidae, one of the first groups of pterosaurs that managed to spread almost all over the world. The Rampharynchid family itself is a part of the informal grouping known as Rampharynchoidea, which, although it's an unnatural collection of animals, includes the more basal pterosaurs, as opposed to the more derived forms contained in Pterodactyloidea. Other taxa in the Rampharynchoidea grouping are creatures such as Dimorphodon, Caviramus, and Batrachognathus, the latter genus being another small pterosaur discovered to have lived in the same time and place as Sordes. The hairy devil seems to have had some effective adaptations to catching and feeding on the prey it consumed, with teeth positioned at the front of its mouth that were ideally suited to gripping, and strong crushing teeth nearer the back. Sordes doesn't show any evidence of having had a bony or keratin crest. So, this animal's discovery represents a significant point in the history of pterosaur research, and the exceptionally preserved fossils we have of this creature give paleontologists a truly unique vision of how these devils of the Jurassic lived all those millions of years ago. Now, I need to make a quick announcement here just to let you all know that it's unlikely there will be any Sunday videos for the next two weeks. Everyone working here on the channel has exams coming up that need some preparing for, and we just won't have time to keep up three videos a week for the next fortnight. Seven days of science will continue as normal, however Animal of the Week will be on hold for a bit too. I hope you can understand, and we'll be back to the usual upload schedule after the 20th of January. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.